we know in Russia is that if they're drawing blood, they're irradiating the blood with laser wavelengths and frequencies. They're reintroducing that to the body and they're getting tremendous changes, particularly with diabetes. And uh, they're using it for many other uh, conditions. Um, we can't do that as chiropractors um, or as clinicians and therapists here in terms of drawing the blood and putting it back in. Okay, unless you're a phlebotomist and putting it back in, that's the dicey part. Okay, my version of that, I'm just putting it out there as an experiment in quackery, okay? Mm -hmm. My version of that is for you to consider uh, <coughs> using other body fluids. So here we'll talk just about saliva. Um, take a sample of saliva and have, uh, have the patient dilute it many, 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 many times, okay? Eight ounce glass. Put the saliva sample in, just take one drop, put it into the next eight ounce glass. Now you just got one drop in there. Irradiate that. Irradiate the saliva before you put it into the water. Irradiate that sample. Take that sample, one drop, put it in, irradiate it. Next, take a drop, irradiate that, okay? You're making a laser, there's got to be a word for this, a laser homeopathic out of this, all right? Um, and then have the patient, after you muscle test, how many times? You can muscle test for how much should I take, how frequent should I take it. Go ahead and set her up on that right away. And, um, and see if that doesn't help with some of their conditions. I would use this on uh, people who are really, really, really debilitated, okay? And uh, on diabetes patients and uh, patients with other types of disorders. Now, the other thing with homeopathy. Can I finish that thought, that thought before you go Sure. Out? I'm sorry to do that to you, but no problem. If you're going to take your potentizer, basically what you're doing. Yes. So you're going to take a, the small amount you have left, and you're going to put it into a, a medium that's alcoholic medium, or just distilled water will do it. Well, if they're doing it at home, they can drink it right down. But if they want to make it, you, you can just take one drop from that, put in an alcohol, uh, you know, 80% solution alcohol, mm -hmm. and and you've got your homeopathic right there for them. Okay. So. But laser ra irradiated. Okay. That's the key. It's okay. not a normal homeopathic. Okay. This is laser irradiated and it's going to be very different. Okay. So basically I get a crude with you. She can just like spit yeah. into a glass yep. of water. Right. And ready and you, you know how many times a potent ties it down? You Test them. Okay. Just All right. We're gonna just, we'll start with, you know, if you want to start with four ounces. At four ounces, how many times do I need to dilute this? Sure. And just keep going. This is not classical homeopathy by any stretch of the imagination. But I'll bet you you'll get a result. Here's what you need to know about homeopathy. What you have here, uh, the Newton Laboratories were wonderful. They're being very supportive of uh, the Institute, by the way, the Academy. Um, and they're going to be making a special homeopathic for us that has a lot of the different nutrients in it to enhance laser therapy. It'll be in cream base. You'll be able to apply it topically. Shoot that laser in there. Oh, man, it's going to be fabulous. So they're, they're working with me on, on giving them the formula, and they're thrilled. So they're going to make it for us. So we'll have that real soon. They gave us samples here of a detoxifier. When you go through an airport, how many of you have had to travel with your homeopathics and worried about them getting just radiated like nobody's business? It wipes them out, right? It wipes out your homeopathics. So now you got a problem because some of you will be traveling with those expensive two or three hundred dollar test kits and holy schmagagi, they're worthless. Once they're, uh, they've been exposed to those x-rays, they're worthless. How do you bring them back without having to go spend that money? Right here. Irradiate your homeopathic, it'll bring it back. And just irradiate it. Now that's through a brown bottle. If you're worried about the brown bottle, open it up, shine it directly on there. Then when you're finished, you can go ahead and succuss it. You got a nice potentized remedy again, okay? Now, let's say that this is a prescription drug. You're having a patient with an antibiotic that they're having real strong side effects to. Have them hold the drug in their hand, irradiate the drug as they're holding it, try to catch that thenar eminence, try to get all that information in there. It will neutralize that, it will change the spin on the drug, and now they'll be able to tolerate it, they'll have fewer side effects. And I can guarantee that it helps, because I've had to do a bunch of drugs that were nasty yes. to, with my illness, and we got rid of most of the side effects of the drugs just by doing this type of 
work with them. Catherine is the first person that I actually did that with out of desperation. <laughs> she was having a terrible reaction to uh, uh, one of the um, antibiotics. Tetracycline. Yep, it was tetracycline. Back in 88. That's right. And I treated her for it. We took um, the entire, what you want to try to do is, if you can, you can do it from one pill, one sample. That will help. But if you get the whole prescription there, go ahead and shoot the whole prescription, and that'll that'll totally help with it. The body will tolerate it better. <laughs> then, if you can, do the points that we showed you for the allergy reactions. That'll enhance it also. Okay? That's uh, home homeopathy. Homeopathics are fabulous. They're fabulous. And you combine homeopathy with laser therapy, you're really working on quantum medicine level. And they're both uh, working on energetic level. And there's so much more that you can do when you add homeopathics um, to, your, to your work here. So I'm just going to say that casually. We have other samples here. And what I just did with uh, Dr. Sudeis, I treated her. Now, these, some of these samples, uh, copper, nickel, iron, B12, we don't have B2. You need to know if your patients are able to handle these. Because if they're not able to handle and they're having some kind of a neurological compromise with exposure to these particular elements, your laser therapy is going to be slower. These are the nutrients that enhance the effectiveness of the cytochromes that we talked about earlier. Okay, your P450s, your porphyrins, okay? And then we just have for you guys to, to fool around with some of the other homeopathics that you want to work with neuromuscularly. Vitamin C, of course, is very important. We're talking forming collagen. You've got to know if they're able to handle that. Uh, and then with homeopathy, uh, we've got Rustox, which is uh, wonderful for uh, all of our muscles and joints, and some Nux Pharmacol, which I think is a very, very good formula. Um, we don't have uh, any Apis. We have some Bryonia. I want to uh, digress to Apis and talk about lymphatic drainage real quick, and then we're going to see how Tosh is doing over here. They're setting up a pretest with HRV, heart rate variability, and they're testing her breathing. She's symptomatic with pneumonia. So we're doing a pretest on her. We're getting what you guys would do as a fellow of the academy. We're doing heart rate variability studies. We're going to treat her, and then we're going to see if we made a change. Okay? So um, anyway, that's, that's where we're at with, the, with our homeopathics. Um, <coughs> Newton Laboratories is very distinct. They have true homeopathics. These are not energetics, okay? They're made classically by uh, Dr. Uh, Luke Charlton, is a uh, European um, homeopath, and um, he has a fabulous laboratory, he happens to be here in Georgia. We're very lucky to have access to that. Anything that you would like to have made up in a homeopathic dilution, they will get that for you. They'll make that for you. The device that I'm using is called a capnometer, and a capnometer is in every operating room, it's in any intensive care, and, uh, and anytime you have an operation or if you go into an ambulance, they'll most likely monitor what we call um, the, the breathing gas exchange. Um, so here I'm put on here, and what was interesting was to just get her started on this, and then, it, and it's a complete biofeedback tool. So. The thing that we're finding is that people don't underbreathe. How many of us feel that way? We say, oh, we're not breathing enough. We need to breathe deeper. We need to breathe longer, right? Actually, most of us breathe way, way, way too much for our metabolic rates. What do I mean by that? Um, did you ever remember an athlete who uh, is feeling absolutely great as long as he's doing his athletics? and when he stops is when he's feeling anxious, and he's feeling jittery, and he's just not <coughs> feeling good until he goes out and runs again or does his athletics. Have you ever seen that phenomenon? Yeah. Okay, or I'm gonna just put it in another context. Have we ever seen a, a smoker whose physiology was really good actually when they're smoking, except we know smoking's not good for them, and then they quit smoking, and then all of a sudden they got hypoglycemia or diabetes, or they got anxious, they put on weight. Sure. Isn't that, you know, and, and you're kind of like, wow, you know, they should be doing better now. Okay, well, this is going to give us why that is occurring. Because many of us breathe other than what our metabolic requirements are. 
they're breathing like we're running five miles. In reality, we're, we're, we're just being here and I, with you and I. So, so what this is measuring right now. is I kind of look at this as a tennis line and we want to get above what we call 35 parts per uh, what? oh boy yeah we got two dually we want to get above this line and we want to have every breath above this line and when that occurs uh, respiration the oxygen is actually now available and being utilized by the body when it's below these lines the oxygen that's around the cell is actually very, very um, resistant and it's not being attracted into the hemoglobin or into the cell at all. Isn't that kind of wild? You know, that oxygen could be resistant. And what it is is many of us overbreathe. And an asthmatic typically breathes five, maybe ten times more than their actual metabolic requirements. And they can't get a breath. Or another way to look at it is you got oxygen everywhere, but none of it is being utilized by the body. So one of the things that we're going to find, and, and what, what's so neat, is I just gave her a little bit of a information like we want to get above this line. Since we've done, I, I've shared that with her, I kind of wish I didn't initially, is now she's creating her own biofeedback because she knows she needs to be above that line. And most people don't need to be on these things a whole bunch of times, but we can actually see changes by knowing when a breath is worth working for us and when a breath isn't. Isn't that kind of weird? You can take the same breath, but sometimes it works for us and not. Mm -hmm. So, and then the other thing we can do is heart rate variability. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and it was really interesting because uh, what I saw earlier is when she coughed, her heart rate went down. So it's a, it's a way for me to get some physiological measurements and then I can use either homeopathics or I can use anything in my toolbox to see if that makes changes. Um, and at the same time, uh, so many of our patients actually take this home and then they work on themselves. So what we want to do for the smoker is to have them breathe better after, without the behavior of smoking than when they do. And when that occurs, there's no more desire for smoking. They, they, just, they never go back to it. The same thing with any addict or anybody who's had post-traumatic stress. Post-traumatic stress is really tough to work with because there's all these breathing rhythms um, out. Um, so what this is measuring is actually <coughs> her heart rate and it measures it every second <coughs> from one breath. Do you notice how she just coughed and her heart rate went actually down yeah, and now it's accelerated a little bit. And then over here is telling me a little bit about parasympathetic and the higher these numbers the better the parasympathetic is so um, right so now what we're going to do <coughs> doctors sorry for your eyes for doing that yeah. what are we going to treat just put it out there you're the clinician she's coming in with pneumonia Go for the lungs. Go for the lungs. Any other suggestions? That's certainly one thing we got to do. Anything else? Infection. Go for the infection. That's a good thing. That's an interesting thing. How do you go for the infection? Saliva sample. Treat it as though you're doing the allergy work. You can use that for pneumonia. You can use it for common colds. You can use it for any infectious process. You have a child who's just been vaccinated. Do the saliva. Put the saliva on their body, in their pocket, do the points. They'll have less of a vaccination. You won't have vaccinosis. Okay, so we're going to do a saliva sample. we got to calm her lungs down. Any other suggestions? <coughs> Give me areas you would irradiate with the laser to help her with her coughing. I'll let you go through neck and shoulder and chest. This food can start moving through here. Okay, good. Good. Neck, shoulders, chest. Any other suggestions? Lymphatic. What are the muscles you recruit when you breathe? What are the muscles that you see on asthmatics that are <gasps> Sorritus. Okay. All those. Scalings. So you got you, you got the, the all these muscles up here. Okay. What about the diaphragm? We got a spasm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What happened with her heart? When she this coughed. Is, this is where down. she coughed right here. <laughs> what? Wow. It stressed her heart. Why? Valsalvo type. What? The valsalvo type. Right, what, but what? What's the mechanism? 
The pericardium is innervated and it sends branches into the diaphragm. If you want to impact the heart, irradiate the diaphragm. It'll calm that stuff right down, okay? Then do your uh, uh, points, acupuncture points on the finger, little finger, inside a little finger right there, Sing Dao point, doctor. The Sing Dao point. If you look at a little finger, if there's a lot of heart stress, it'll be crooked. You come up here with your laser and you treat that Sing Dao point, you'll straighten that finger out. Guess what you'll also do? From this point, through that meridian, you'll help the heart, okay? Little finger, heart. Look at some of your other Sing Dao points, end points and acupuncture that are on the hands, <coughs> and you'll be able to diagnose the, the stressed um, the stressed organ systems if you got a crooked index finger. You know the one that you do this with? You know why culturally that's so nasty? That's your large intestine point. And what are you saying when you shake that finger at somebody? Sure. Woo! <laughs> Everybody goes, don't do that. <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> it's How about nice. the middle finger? Yeah, the little finger is the same thing I was just now saying. the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, middle, the middle finger, you have the brain, the head, the throat, the neck goes all the way down the spine on the middle finger, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll talk about hand therapy uh, at another time. I want to get to Tasha. First thing we're going to do, she's in pain. We've got to fix it. Open up to the stellate ganglion information in your book. It talks about a really, really important place to irradiate. I'm going to use my laser pointer to show you where it is, and you need to understand why I'm choosing to do this first. And I'm in front of the anterior body of C6 and C7, right above the clavicle, C6, C7. Turn their head and you can feel it. Here's the, here's the, here's the, the, the throat, and there's your SCM. You want to get in there, okay? So you have them turn that. Push the SCM away a little bit and you can catch it. Now let me show you here on her. Here's a stellate ganglion. Oh, good. Extend your head back, sweetheart. You want to come anywhere in here. C6, C7 area. Doing okay? Is that an okay position for you? Uh-huh. All right, good. Turn your head the other way, please. And what points are these? This is the st uh, stimulation of the stellate ganglion. And I'm just painting the whole area. And it's right above, here's your clavicle, it's right <coughs> above the clavicle and the anterior to the C6, C7 area. And we're going to get right in there. Okay, good. Now, I happen to have access to a really nice laser that does this really well. So what I will do with this... I'm, just, I, you know, I'm sorry to tell you that what, what we're going to probably do is. Uh, <coughs> oh, I don't know why this isn't turning on, David. What we're probably going to do is make her cough a little bit more because we're going to get some things up. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, 1000 is real handy. We showed it earlier. It's got a lot going on about the size of a little uh, baseball here. So turn your head again and we can irradiate that area. Let's see what we're getting for a reading as we do that. If there's. What, what's in here? Jugular vein, vagus, uh, carotid, carotid. <coughs> uh, lymphatics, lymphatics. great, neural lymphatics, and the apex of the lung. So guess what? I got a great place to hit for helping lung. Sure. Right there. Kidney, well. Good, yes. Now circulation kidney is below it, but it will influence K27 for sure. Because guess what? Even though this is the size of a baseball, the entire periphery around it will be stimulated with microcirculation. She's coughing less. Turn towards me. You get in there. She's coughing quite a bit less. Mm -hmm. Anything changing on our readings? Um, she's getting a little, her exchange is getting a little better. Now it's really better. So. Do you see how these numbers were real low here and now they're coming up? Mm -hmm. So it, it's definitely affecting. Now this is an, an acupuncture lung area. All right. You see where I am with the head of the humerus and the lung? There's the other stimulating point for the lung. The other side, do bilateral. Are those called different points? Different yeah, points? this is where you can, uh, this is like a now point in, a, in, a, in acupuncture. It's a point you go to. It's an acupuncture, major acupuncture area. Whatever you just did really <coughs> made a nice effect. 
it's all becoming cumulative here. I'm gonna go to the diaphragm. Can you lift your shirt so we can? Yeah. If you don't mind. Here's your diaphragm. I'm gonna. You can close that over it if you want. Okay, we're gonna go right to the diaphragm. Wow, that made the biggest change right there. Now what I'm finding is you treat, you'll get a change, wait a few minutes, and you'll see it really take an effect systemically. And she took a nice deep breath and she is not coughing. Okay. Now we want to get the vagus nerve because that's been irritated, right? Yep. So how are we going to hit the vagus nerve? Ear. Ear. Mm -hmm. Let's go to her ear. Any change there? Not yet. Not yet. Apoglossal. We'll get all the cranial nerves because they all come out of that jugular foramen. There's another nice deep breath. More comfortable to breathe? I feel like they can get more in. She's getting more in, yeah. <coughs> there you go. There, there, what's the brown? Um, this is measuring heart rate beats <coughs> per minute, and her heart rate, since we started lasering here, is dropped. is dropped compared to what it was over here. So. And the significance of it dropping would be uh, it shows less stress. Now we're going to turn right yeah. stress. Less the what, stress. To the what you just system. did now really changed the heart rate quite a bit. Oh, take a look so. there. Look at the heart rate. Guess where I am. Massive. Guess where I am? Greater occipital nerve. Yes, exactly. I feel that in my eyes. And she feels it in her eyes because occipital innervates the vision, right? Greater occipital nerve. This cool stuff. Now what this is measuring, look how her breathing rate was really high and now it, how it's really calmed down. It's not as hard. I don't right. feel like I'm suffocating. So she's literally breathing now, averaging 16. One cough and she's clearing her lungs from pneumonia, guys. You need your plants. She, no, we're oh, doing a test now. Thank you. She's got a saliva sample. We know that if there's a germ in there, there's a bacteria in there, we're going to have it. We've got access to it, okay? And what we're going to do now is our clearing. So <clears throat> let's muscle test to make sure she's reactive and we've got a good sample. Hold. Whoop. Wipes right out. She's wiping right out with it, okay? Lean forward. Thank you. Alright. Remember, you're going to irradiate the spine real quickly. And start at the base of the, of the head if you've got something that works like a Q1000. A number of you do have a real good sample to work with. So I'm starting up here. And I'm going to palpate the cranial rhythm, and I'll discuss that in just a second. I'm holding it here for a while because she needs it. It's not, cranial rhythm isn't changing yet. No, it's moving. Now take a look at these numbers. This, oh, is, this is now better than normal. So that, that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> and remember, she was in a pathological state <coughs> two seconds ago. Okay, and we just brought it up her spine. You can do it a couple more times just to reinforce it if you want. Doesn't take very long at all. She's breathing deeper. Just took a nice deep breath. Now I'm going to just do this. Thank you. Now we're going to take our laser. We can use the Q1000. <coughs> or um, in this case, I'm going to reinforce what we did in the class with this little laser light pen. If you have a red laser that gives you a point, this is how to do it. Hoku point. Right? Palpate her cranial rhythm. You'll know when it's clear. She's in a still point. She's not moving. I'll come a little closer. There's a controversy about whether or not you should be on the skin to do these things. I just have the habit of staying off the skin. You can, there you go. Now she's moving. You can watch my hand. Look, it's not moving. Minute, she's out of a still point. And by the way, with this whole cool point, we're getting quite a bit of speckles over this acupuncture point. You'll get the acupuncture points give you more speckles. And there she's moving a little bit. There. Yes, very weak. Very weak cranial rhythm. Let me have your foot. 
Now look look how the breath breathing rate went from a high of 32, mm -hmm. where now she's literally at about 10. That's normal. That's normal breathing rate. She had pneumonia. I said past tense, didn't I? Mm. I actually had an appointment for tonight. You had an appointment with your doctor? Yep. Your medical doctor? For, yeah, for tonight. Walking pneumonia. Cancel it. Walk down. Yeah. Okay, come back up here. Now, what I want to reinforce, she's holding the sample. Don't let him put it down. Hold the sample while you do these points. It doesn't have any meaning. It'll help, but it, if you want to really be specific, have him hold it. <coughs> okay? Hold it. Then after five minutes, get it away from there. Make sure you get rid of it. Tell them not to touch it. If you got to do anything, make sure you don't touch it when you're sneezing, coughing, wheezing. This is good for the common cold, too. How's that for changes? Where are we at? Well, almost every breath is above the line now. Um, her, the amount of breaths per minute just have dropped substantially. Um, the wider these are, are the deeper the breath or the the more volume, and her heart is just looking good. So Now you have participated in the first uh, clinical study of laser medicine and pneumonia. Right now, right here, cool. the right. first clinical study of laser medicine being evaluated in terms of how it physiologically impacts the body and changes the symptoms of pneumonia in front of your eyes that fast. So now, what I find remarkable is before her, when she coughed, it really affected her breathing rate. And now when she coughs, it's, it's, it's no change. So we know that the severity of that cough isn't as damaging to the body. What about the heart rate? What did it do to the heart rate when she's coughing now compared to before? Um, really stressful. Yeah, it, it's it's not nearly. She coughed right in here. And it was <coughs> very little stress. So. Yes. Congratulations. <laughs> right. How you doing? I've been breathing like that for a couple weeks. <laughs> it's time it's to nice. Approach. Nice to have your breath back, isn't it? Okay. Thank you. That's your demonstration of stellate ganglion. That's a demonstration of how to think clinically about where else you want to go and how else you want to do laser therapy. Just get imaginative. Could you shut the door? And whatever comes to mind, go for it. Go for it. Document it. Try to remember it. Because the next time you see it again, guess what? It's, it'll be there waiting for you. And you can say, I could fix pneumonia because you will be able to tremendously impact these patients keep them out of the hospital and off of the drugs like that. Thank you so much. Remember the impact of laser therapy in terms of the positive things and why it's so important for us in terms of being chiropractors or body workers. One of the primary things that it does is it lays down and improves fibroblast formation. It lays down collagen. It lays down collagen. It helps the body to make collagen. What do you need <coughs> to look better and look younger if you're dealing with changes in the face? You want to lay down collagen. How are they doing that now? Injection. Injections. Injections. And I've treated a lot of patients <coughs> with laser therapy um, when they've had those fabulous facelifts. I've had to pull a lot of people out of the complications following these facelifts. <coughs> They can be horrible, and um, they don't talk about that in, out in the public. They just sort of show the befores and afters. Well, I'm telling you what, my patients who've had a facelift cannot go out in public for one to two, sometimes three weeks afterwards. Why? Because they have such bruising, it's horrible. You can take the laser, protecting the eyes. Remember what we said about protecting the eyes, and you can treat around the face. And you take away, first of all, the bruising when they've had any kind of a facial trauma, and I'm including the facelifts to that. You can work with the laser. Remember, scar tissue will come up. It'll come up bubbled and raised. 
and oh my goodness, it, you know, they'll get it all around, they'll get folds and everything where they do this. Any types of scarring on the body. You have to address scarring. Use the laser. The majority of times, what's going to happen is the scarring will be going through your acupuncture points. You've got to fix that. It's going to block the flow of the acupuncture point. The laser will do that. It will make those raised scars lay flat, and it will perfectly heal a scar. Who's got a scar? Anybody have a scar that we can no, use? Yeah. Whoa, we had some scars now. Hey, uh, what, uh, protect the eyes. Uh, what type of glasses? Just regular dark glasses? No, no, you have to. It, no, if you've got a 3B laser, you're going to have to use special glasses okay. for that, okay? Yeah. Otherwise, ask them, just keep your eyes closed, put a covering over them, make sure it's a covering where they're not going to open their eyes, okay? You're not going to be shining the laser directly in their yeah. eyes. That's what we won't want to go for. You're not going to hold it right there in their eye. Who's got a scar? Come, come talk about your scar real quick. That'll be cool. That'll interfere, you know, with your testing. Yeah. You see where she carries that? Think that's strong. Both. Did you see where she carries that? There's the scar. Guess what? It does not therapy localize. If I touch the scar, it doesn't show. So now you would say, oh, it's fine, I don't have to worry about it. Wrong. Can I scratch you? we got to irritate that scar to make it show. Oh, whoop. Now it's positive. Now you go back with the laser. And you can use a laser light pen or any of the wonderful lasers that you all have brought here. And we can do that. Shouldn't take very long. Pull. Nice and strong. We scratch it. Nice and strong. That's a simple scar. You get these mastectomy scars, mm. women can't even raise their arms. You get in there and you fix that and you'll get movement immediately. It's just life-giving. And the same, do I have the same token with the face? People are so self-conscious of scars on the face. You can make those changes for them. You can get these scars to lay flat, you can heal them so they fade, they're not bright red. And remember what I said with sutures? If it's a suture and you're healing a wound, you don't want to do that. Immediately after the stitches are out, you start going for it and you'll have less of a scarring phenomenon. Okay? So thank you. I appreciate demonstrating that. So what it's going to do as a laser facelift is it's going to take away the swelling and the lymphedema. lymphedema. So immediately they're going to look younger because their face isn't going to be all puffy. Okay? Uh, then it's going to lay down collagen and it's going to help to fill in those uh, wrinkles. Is it as effective as Botox? It's not as dramatic as a change in Botox, but they still are able to make an expression following laser therapy. <laughs> okay? It's not as toxic and it's not as traumatic as, as the surgery and you need a, a, a quite a, a number of, uh, of treatments, but there is a change with it. Dr. Marika Van Vitsai, who introduced me to laser therapy, was a phenomenal uh, naturopath, but she was also an esthetician. Uh, she brought over special formulas to work with doing laser photophoresis, and we'll be developing those also for you if you want to work with the facial, facial tissues, uh, things that help tremendously for the laser to enhance the collagen formation. Um, so that's just a simple aside on, on laser facelifts. You want to really relax the face. Remember, you got to get the, the, the nerves here, the cranial nerves. Get all your cranial nerves. Get that person relaxed, and you'll take that stress and take those reasons why they have the lines in their face, okay? And why they're grimacing all day long, because they're in sympathetic override. Um, briefly, let's talk about uh, sympathetic override emotions and TMJ. Uh, TMJ. What does an animal do when it's about to attack? It right? growls, okay? If you release the pterygoid muscles inside the mouth, and that's where the hinge is internally, okay? You will release the limbic system and the brain. This is how to hit the brain directly. Stellate ganglion impacts the thalamus, right? TMJ, you can do the TMJ directly. And you can do the TMJ internally with your ter releasing your pterygoid muscles and impacts the limbic system. That's a very ancient part of the brain. That is the anger, the, the, that just, you know, quick anger center of the brain. TMJ patients have a heck of a time holding their anger back, or maybe that's one of the reasons why they have a TMJ problem. It's because they've been holding their, you know. 
and you relieve a, a lot of uh, problems with that. And there's a lot more to that with dentistry. Mm -hmm. Dentists are all over the place <coughs> therapy. Boy, they're on top of this like nobody's business. They're doing tremendous things with laser therapy and, and surgeries and tooth extractions and balancing the system. Okay, so that's that. I want to teach cranial rhythmic impulse and palpation of that. Is everybody ready for that? Yeah. All right, let's go. Who is my volunteer? You want to volunteer? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to come over here and demonstrate that. How are you feeling? She's going to do the cranial. Get a little tired, like, after lunch. Yeah. After yeah. lunch, you got tired? Right here, so yeah. <coughs> we're going to have you. Okay. You comfortable? You okay? Because mm -hmm. what she'll do is you'll see how she goes in. Do you have a history we in. need to be aware of? No, I think so, no. Okay, did you do the tests on him? What did you find? Um, he, he was he, he was off. The cerebral was off. Cerebellum was off. Did you have a positive rhombor where he was standing yeah. up and swaying? Okay. Did you have the past pointing? Did he miss his nose? Yeah, he right a little hand. bit. It wasn't bad. He missed it once. Left right hand. Right hand. Right. It was right hand. He missed it. So we had left cerebellar problem. Probably an atlas on that side too. Right, Doc? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could be. Yeah, I could, it could be. I like that. That's a good answer. Could be is a good answer. Because you don't know for sure, but you might need his, to know. His uvula was way off to, to his right. And the uvula was off, so those tests were all positive, so we want to make a change. We're going to assess his cranial rhythmic impulse. Okay. Craniopaths know about this stuff. If you're a good craniopath, you palpate it. Okay? If you're um, a, 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 a applied kinesiologist, you might know how to do that. Unfortunately, a lot of chiropractors, because of our style of cranial work, we, we don't learn to master the palpation. So um, my background is in all of the different aspects of cranial work and cranial sacrotherapy. I used to teach for the Upledger Institute many, many lifetimes ago. So what I loved about it is that it gave me a phenomenal tool. Besides impacting the parasympathetic system by doing the traditional 10-step protocol, what I learned was that just listening to that cranial rhythm gave me profound information on this person's body. So we're going to have listening stations that y'all are going to practice with. Are you familiar with cranial, cranial sacral therapy? Are you good at palpating the rhythm? Great at it. You're not great at it? Okay, well we'll just bring everybody um, up to speed and, and give you something really cool to work with. Now, there are listening stations here, right here. I'm above and below his joint, all right? And I'm going to come over on that joint and show you. So we're going to say we've got arm listening stations at the elbows. That's where we're going to go to. And here's another one. I got a listening station here. Now, you, you do traditional adjusting. You're not an activator guy, right? No, I, I don't adjust either. I just use laser, basically. You're using the laser now, basically? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so I just assessed him. I was it that fast. He's got problems in these elbows. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, thank you. Good. His wife is here saying, yeah. All right. We've got problems, and from here I'm going to say it's, it can be, um, this is a listening station at the knee, above and below the joint. It can be either in his hip, can be in his sacrum, can be in the knee, can be here. Any of those places on this side. You have back pain? A little bit, yes. Very low. Okay, not too bad though, but it's firing, isn't it? Yes. you got some nociceptors firing. This is not gangbusters either. This is a little torque and I'll bet you this is coming out of an ankle. Okay, so what I did here guys is I put my hand above and below the joint lightly. Nickels worth of pressure. And all I did was hold it there. And I stuck with it for a few minutes and what I got is look, this side moves, this side didn't. Okay, above and below the joint. The joint is torquing. He's got something going on. Now I know that real quickly. But he didn't give me a history about it. So you come up to your patients and you'll do that. And, all, and you say, well, why didn't you tell me you have problems with your elbows? You know I can fix that stuff. Right? And they'll say, how did you know that? Oh, you're so psychic. What and should you feel, Doctor? Here it is. Here's the torque. This is going forward. This is going back. It's a torque. We don't want a torque. Anyway. What you want to feel is the joint coming forward and the joint coming back in a nice 